Hello everyone, my name is Mikey. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And today I'm excited because in the mail came my Blue Yeti microphone. And I have been anxious to get the quality of the videos better. And I knew that audio quality was the first thing I had to tackle as I was just using a really bad mic before. So yeah, we got brand new audio and I, I think it sounds pretty good. So give me some feedback down below uh, what you think about it. Now you clicked on the video looking for a get started guide to Hunter Call of the Wild. And I am absolutely fallen in love with this game. I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, I purchased it a long time ago and did not play it that much and just recently picked it back up and have really been enjoying it. So if you couldn't uh, guess it from the name, the Hunter is a hunting simulator and it takes place in a huge map. I'll show you this first. This is These are the different regions. These are the two available to you at the beginning and this would be uh, considered DLC. So I started here in Hirschfelden. I think that's how you say it. But you can also start here in Leighton Lake District. And they all have their different uh, quest lines, their main quest line, and their side missions to complete for people. All based around the idea of hunting, but some people obviously want you to do other things, uh, like take pictures of animals, things of that nature, track certain animals. But we'll get into that in a little bit. So right now we are in uh, Hirschfelden. That's where I started the game. I've also been over here. And I'll show you a little bit of the interface. You can see it's a pretty clean HUD. Uh, down below to your right you have your compass, north, east, southwest, and the green cone on the compass is showing uh, where the wind is blowing. So animals downwind of you will scent you quicker than they will upwind of you. Actually they won't sense you up here. They'll catch you either by sound or whatever. So that's wind. Uh, you can see right now that's just the ammunition that I have in, uh, in my gun currently. Below that you can see my health bar, which you can drop from taking fall damage or being hurt by animals. You see your little heart rate there. Now if I run around for a little bit, you'll see my heart pump. You can see it's pumping harder and harder and harder and harder. And this is to stop people from running and then taking out a gun and being able to shoot. You can see I'm really wobbly. Uh, because my heart is pumping. To the right of that is how vis or how visual, um, uh, how big of a visual you are to animals. So, as you can see, when you're running, you're a full circle. If I crouch, I'm a half circle, and this changes based on the cover you in. You're in, and if I'm in a bush and I lay down all the way or go prone. Uh, you can see that line shows that I'm practically invisible. And if you have no line at all, then you are invisible. Uh, to the animals. And the little audio thing to the right shows uh, how much noise you're making. So if you're walking or running or crouch walking or fa fast crouch walking, it changes that. And that um, you can kind of play with that a little bit to see how the animals react and you can see you can kind of figure out with experience how how much noise you can be making out there around animals. So now that you got the world map covered and you got the heads up display covered, well, we can talk about the map a little bit. So this is the enormous map and it's split into sections. Now in Hirschfelden, you will start down here in Rothenfeld. Uh, this is, you'll start down here and this is the first uh, place you'll pick up. And then you'll walk down to this outpost and pretty much start the game up here. And you can see these little lookouts. Now the lookouts are what give uh, vision to the rest of the map. So you can see once I find, get these lookouts, I'll be able to see more of the map up here. What's nice about outposts is when you find them, I'm in an outpost right now, you can run to the flagpole and press E on them. You'll get a little reward and you'll be able to use the outpost to fast travel to. So I can fast travel here if I so choose by right clicking. So that is a nice little feature. At the outposts, you can also find caches. And the caches are what give you your uh, store tab. So you can see, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see your rifles, handguns, shotguns, bows, all the ammo, the different sights, the lures, the equipment, the scents, the binoculars, uh, garages for people who buy the DLC to get ATVs, your character loadout, and the stats, and the modifiers, and what's in your backpack, and you can add things and take things out and switch your gear up for different hunts. 
I'm going to show you something in the store screen real quick. As you can see, I have all the rifles unlocked, but if I go to handguns, you can see you need handgun scorers to uh, unlock these. Uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, that was my phone. I should have put that on silent. <laughs> but um, like I was saying, these have different scores are required for them. So you need to get kills with and uh, harvests with, with this weapon to unlock this weapon and this weapon. And the same goes for shotguns, bows, and rifles. Now we can talk a little bit about the ammo. You start off with the 243 with soft points. So you can see there's penetration and expansion. I think the penetration modifier is much more important, and that's what polymer tips give you. So as you get better weapons that do more damage, can take down bigger game more efficiently, uh, you can start upgrading uh, different rifles and then to uh, different ammo as well. And you can also get better scopes for your guns and all that jazz. So that's the progression system in terms of uh, equipment you can use. It's just based on what level you are. Like for example, down here in collars, you have to be level 27 to unlock the red deer collar. I'm level 17. So it takes a little more time uh, than just what you could normally purchase the credits. So you need the credits, the currency to be able to purchase it, and you also need the level to have the ability to buy it. So now that we got that covered, let's also look at what, one more thing we can do at Outposts before we head out. And that is these uh, resting points. So this allows you to change the time in the game and also heal up and it costs a little bit of money. So you can decide to hunt at night or during the day, it's up to you. I prefer to hunt during the day, which starts at five. So now that we talked about uh, lookouts and outposts, you can see these little symbols. They'll start off as these question marks, but once you find them, uh, they'll turn into this little picture. And these are stands that you can go to and build with your money to hunt at. I personally don't use them. But another thing these question marks can be is these little uh, stone things. All these little monuments, you could call them really tiny things along the side of roads. And they give you experience and they have a little bit of backstory and lore to them. And it just helps you through the game. And these are places of interest with these little flags that have some pretty cool lore and also give you experience for finding them. So now that we talked about the map, I think we pretty much covered everything. Go to the mission log, you can see your current story missions and your side missions and your completed missions. You can see the different things you have with you in your inventory, which you can change at the cache at outposts. And this is the skill tree. So as you level up, you will get skill points to spend. You can spend them in either stalker or ambusher. You can switch between them and put points into both. And you can read that there's different levels to them and uh, the different benefits that they provide and some cool upgrades for your character. So yeah, this should just fit your play style however you want to build it. And then you have your perk tree, uh, which you can focus on different weapon classes. Some have some carryover perks. Uh, for example, the handgun perk right here carries over and some over here do. But you can see I focused mainly on rifles starting at the beginning of the game. And then your codex, you can get a hunter log and tutorial log and information about different animals, their behavior, habitat, senses, uh, if they travel in groups, when they're active, what kind of weapon class you would need to kill them with, um, or the recommended weapon class. You can always go higher, but you lose your integrity bonus, which we'll talk about later, and what equipment you can use to uh, attract them and things of that nature, the difficulty of hunting them. Hunt Club Beta, you'll have challenges here that will give you some points and things of that nature that you can, you know, claim. And, and then your system to set up your settings, uh, your game settings and everything like that. So yeah, now that I kind of ran through the basic uh, interfaces of the game, I'd like to show you uh, a little bit of the hunting. So I think we're just going to go out and we're going to hunt one animal and I can show you uh, hopefully some tracks and how that system works. So. We'll travel over here to the uh, east, and as we're going, uh, it's going to take a little bit. Like I said, this game balances realism and enjoyability really well. Uh, I'm a hunter in real life, um, and I, I enjoy it. I think there's a lot of realistic elements with the ballistics and things like that. 
and how they approach the damage to the animals. But I also think there is some really cool things that they add that make it a little more playable, uh, make it a little more enjoyable so it's not as uh, taxing as I would say regular hunting is, obviously. See, I like to just walk in the woods. Walking is a good place to start. Animals can give out two different calls. They can give out mating calls, mating calls, and they can give out uh, warning calls. Mating calls mean that they're looking for a mate and they have not spotted you. And uh, like I said, warning calls mean that they've either heard you, um, smelled you, like with the wind. You can see if we were going that way, they would smell us. And uh, how much sound you're making. So if you get a warning call, I recommend you crouch and you can kind of sneak up on them that way or get above wind of them or below their wind and try to make less noise and try to stay out of sight. And you'll see when they make a noise, you'll be able to hear it in game, but you'll also uh, see white outlines and parentheses that show a general direction of where the animal is at. We might just sneak up on one. That's a possibility too. They don't always make noises. It looks like an animal down there. Maybe I'm wrong. And there's these little bunnies in the game. You can't hunt them, but uh, they run around and fool you by making noises. So yeah, it's a pretty game. I love uh, how the game looks, and this is running on low on my PC right now. Uh, I run a 750 Ti graphics card, and uh, the game still looks pretty decent to me. Uh, I, I can only imagine that with a better card and running it on medium, high, or ultra, uh, it would look very, very nice. So I, that's what I would recommend is if you want to take a look at this engine, it's called the Avalanche Engine. Uh, it's, it had, it's made of beautiful maps, and I've been enjoying it even on lower settings. So on higher settings, you'll have a little more foliage and, you know, obviously better effects and the foliage will look better and all that good stuff. But I wanted to lower the graphics just to make it look a little better for the video, uh, make it run a little smoother so we're not getting any clipping or anything of that nature. Now we are in a deer that's good, or an area that's good for roe deer. So I might have this scent, or I might be using this uh, call in a little bit. Ooh, and look, perfect. So you can change the color of these highlights and the settings, but these are tracks. Now animals leave sign behind them. So we can click on these tracks with E, and we can see because I have some perks, I know that it's a fallow deer, that it's a male. It's between 151 and 190 pounds, and it was trotting in this direction, in this V. And you can pull out your hunter mate right here. Oh, actually just made a sound. Can't track the sound because I was over the track. They need to fix that. But my guess is that he, that was a warning call did not sound like a mating call to me. So we know that he's just up here, uh, potentially 100 yards away, maybe shorter, we don't know. But you saw that little effect, it shows the general direction. You can kind of hear it too. And as you can see, the tracks were yellow before, now they're red, that just means that this is the current animal that I'm tracking. That's just the color that I chose as the current tracked animal. So we're gonna pick, this is, this should be a really nice fallow deer. This should be a bigger fallow deer. Uh, so we're gonna hunt this one and we're gonna stalk them down and you can kind of see how I do it. I'm using a seven millimeter uh, Magnum here with a Hyperion scope. So uh, this is a little bit overkill for the animal and we can talk about that once I shoot it. Yep, see we got over here. You Now you can shut these tracking things off if you're kind of a purist and you want to make the game really hard on yourself it makes it hard tracking the animal once you've shot it as well but you can see the grass gets pushed down where they've walked oh he's right there oh gosh we snuck up on him he's a small little guy oh gosh I can't believe we snuck up this well it's because the wind's at our backs wow okay so we're going to take a quick shot at him now you can choose different shots and I'll talk about that, but I want to take advantage of this situation to put them down.
And we dropped him. Wow. Okay, so that was a good shot and a powerful caliber. So I could have injured him to kind of show you how uh, the tracking system works uh, once you've shot them. Oop, there's another animal. That's a red fox. We don't mess with that. Another thing I can show you here is feed zones on the map. You scroll away and you can see these little zones. These are called need zones. This just happens to be a feed zone. Uh, sometimes they're sleep, so feed there, uh, sleep zone, and you can see that certain animals go to these different places. In the bottom right, you can see roe deer go there from 9 to 13.30. Um, and that they, they need to go between water, feed, and sleep. So that's a good way to find good hunting spots, good hunting areas awesome so if I wanted to track them oh well we clicked right on the deer so I'll show you this interface right now so it tells you where you shot it the species you know the gender weight fur type all of that the difficulty changes between all animals so uh, some animals can go from one to nine some go from one to five I believe fallow deer go to from one to five the higher difficulty of the animals usually means they're older and more sought after trophies so for example, um, a big buck would be higher difficulty. And the higher difficulty makes them harder to track and it makes them harder to uh, essentially harvest. Uh, they have the same health, obviously. They're the same strength, but they, uh, they're just smarter. They, you, it's harder to sneak up on them. It's harder to get a shot. So it's a really good balancing system that's realistic. Uh, smaller deer generally aren't as smart as older deer. And you can see the trophy rating. He's a little guy, he's 55. And then we'll, I'll talk about these bonuses. So the quick kill bonus, I got 100% because I dropped him. If he ran a long way and I didn't hit him too well, this would go eventually down to zero. Integrity bonus is zero because I shot him with a very large caliber. The 7mm Regent Magnum is way too overpowered for a fallow deer. That's why he, part of the reason why he dropped so quickly. So you have to look at the weapon class and the codex to each animal and match it with the different weapons in the game. So I think a 270 would have matched up or lower, would have given me 100% integrity. Also, if you shoot an animal twice, you get 0% integrity. Consecutive harvest just means, and this is important when you log in for the day, for uh, your hunting sashes you need to uh, get I think five kills before you get this up to a hundred and if you injure an animal and you're tracking it and the blood rate is a uh, really slow or very little and you give up and that animal ended up dying and then you go and shoot another animal this will reset to zero so all of this eventually gives you a score and the score dictates whether you get no score bronze silver gold and then diamond and 950 to a thousand is diamond i think up to 500 is bronze and then in between there you have silver and gold and then you get xp and you get cash and you also get weapon xp for whether you used a gun or, or a rifle a bow or a shotgun over here you can see the different hits obviously we only shot it once and this did 100 percent of the damage I used a 7mm Regent Magnum with uh, polymer tip bullets for better penetration. Remember I talked about that earlier, that penetration is generally better than a expansion stat. Uh, the distance I shot it and the weapon score. So you can turn this by clicking it and you can see he was cording away. This is where the bullet came in at. I pierced the flesh and pierced the right lung and he dropped. Didn't have enough time to go any further. So we click accept and we pick it up. Now, if I would have injured him, I could have saw the blood trail and you can walk a little bit and there would be more blood based on how well you hit them. And there's perks that allow you to track better. So yeah, that was a really good harvest. That worked out really well. We happened to sneak up on him. I thought he would have been much further away. But yeah, so I hope you got the gist of the Hunter Call of the Wild. I've been having a blast with this game, and if you find it enjoyable, I'd really recommend picking it up. Uh, it's $30 right now. Ooh, that's a little graphical glitch. Sometimes the game goes through. I've only had that happen a couple times, though. What are the odds that when I'm filming that happens? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I absolutely love this game. I think you'll have a real fun time with it. There's definitely many hours to be had here. 
if you're if you have a little bit of patience but you like uh, fun games with a uh, little bit of realism thrown in there this game could definitely be something that you would enjoy and i think non-hunters would enjoy it as well if they don't have uh, any moral problems with hunting so yeah thank you guys so much for watching uh, i had a fun time making this video and showing you guys the beginner ropes and giving you a little bit of a rundown so you have a little more information than i did when i started and if you pick up this game, I think it's, like I said, it's $30 on Steam, so it's a little steep, but uh, there's a lot of fun to be had, and there's a lot of DLC available for it. And it's still in early access, it's not officially released, so, you know, the devs are always updating it and uh, making it better and better. Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks.